Hello students, this is your ATM first nine weeks review. Most of it will be over linear, the linear unit with a little bit of the matrix add-in, okay? Today's video will cover number one through eight, and then I will continue the other problems on a different video. Number one, it says, write an equation to determine the size of a pumpkin that begins with a circumference of four inches and grows four inches per week. Question says, what are the variables and parameters and what do they represent? All right, so this is a linear, this is a pumpkin that continues to grow four inches every week. We're not gonna take into account where they start to max out and drop, but we're just gonna talk about the growth. So your equation will look like Y. It's growing four inches per week, starting at four inch, okay? Four inches. So, what are your variables? Your variables are your X and your Y. What does X stand for? It stands for the week, and your Y is the total growth. Like, how big is that pumpkin? Next are your parameters, okay? Your parameters are your numbers. This first four, right here, this four is the rate of growth. The other four is the initial size of the pumpkin. Let me put this red correctly. Variable parameter. Okay. Now, next part says graph number one. Be sure you title. So what do you guys want to title this? I'm going to call it size of pumpkin, okay, title it, label it, that's your skill, and scale it appropriately. Determine all key characteristics. Notice this is by the week. So my x axis is going to be the week. That's your independent variable. It starts off always at zero, and I'm going to put four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, ten. So every week it's growing. It starts off at four, okay? But then it's growing what? Every four. This is the number I want to look at. So here it starts off at four, and it keeps growing by four inches every single week. And I can just keep going. So what is this over here? This is the size of pumpkin. And it is measured in inches. So make sure you label what it's measuring in, okay? The unit is very important. All right, so, and then I'm going to add this part to it because I didn't start exactly, but if you did, that's fine. Now let's take a look. It first starts off at four. So at zero week, it's at four inches. At one week, it grew four more. Two weeks, four more, three weeks. As you can see, there's a pattern taking place. So I'm going to now draw my line, just like that. Now let's analyze the graph that you have here with some of these questions. Your domain, that goes from left to right. What is my domain? Well, I start off at zero growth, and it's going to continue to grow. So zero, included to infinity. What is your range? Your range is from low to high, okay? What is your lowest point? It is at four, and it's gonna keep growing forever to infinity. Your limit. Limit means you're talking about this area right here, okay? So, write it correctly. Limit, as x is approaching negative infinity, the right side will be the limit as x is approaching positive infinity. Now take a look, as it's heading down, it's heading toward the west. It's heading toward the negative. Where is this axis going? It stops right here at 4. So f of x is equal to 4. Okay. This right-hand side, so we're talking about the error right here. As x is approaching positive infinity, it is also going up. So f of x is heading toward the positive infinity. Your x-intercept. Now, this is an application question. Do you see it crossing the x-intercept at all? So the answer is 
not applicable. You are not seeing it. Y intercept, where is it crossing the Y axis? At 0, 4. Interval increasing. Well, let's take a look. What do you see it increasing? Well, it starts increasing right here where the X is 0, and it continues on forever and ever and ever. So it starts off at 0, continues on to infinity. Okay? Decreasing. That graph is not going down. It's continually going up. Interval positive. So you're going to look above. Everything above the x-axis. All that is positive, right? So where is it positive? You look at the y, but your x value, it starts off at 0 and continues to positive infinity. Is it ever negative? Do you see anything down here in the negative region? No. So this graph does not apply. Let me rewrite that infinity sign there. Okay, so there you have your analysis of the graph. Number four says, what will the circumference be in nine weeks? Now, keep in mind, this is your x value. So y is equal to, okay, not the size. This should actually say circumference. Let me add circumference to this. Okay, circumference. There we go. y is equal to 4 times 9 plus 4 comes out to be 36 plus 4 so that comes out to be 40 inches don't forget your unit okay when will the circumference win the blue ribbon at the fair at 112 inches well that's the circumference at that time it says when keyword when you're going to solve for x so minus 4 108 is equal to 4x x is equal to 108 divided by 4 leaves you 27 weeks. Let me check my math on that just real quick, okay? 1112 minus 4 divided by 4, and that's 27 weeks. That is correct. All right. And there you have number 1 through 5. Let's go to number 6, okay? On number 6, Jordan Michaels is playing basketball. He wants to score at least 30 points in the game, not counting any free throws. How many two-pointers and three-pointers could he make? Well, I'm going to label X to be my two-pointers and Y my three-pointers. Okay? So, he wants to score, keyword here is at least. So, he wants to score 30 or more. So, you got two-pointers plus three-pointers. And he wants to score at least 30 or more. And so there you have your inequality. Okay? Let's plot this. Now, the easiest way to plot is you can use x-intercept and y-intercept. Or you can rewrite it in slope-intercept form. Your choice. I think you guys are more familiar with the slope-intercept form, so I'm going to rewrite it in slope-intercept form. In other words, I'm solving for y. Okay? There we go. Subtract 2x. Divide by th 3, so y is greater than or equal to negative 2 third x plus 10. And there I have my inequality. Notice how these two are exactly the same. I'm going to use this to graph, okay? So your x is representing two pointers, and your y is representing three pointers. Okay, so I'm going to label those. Well, let's take a look. All right, at 10. So I'm going to start at 10. You know what? I'm going to start off at 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's going to be my graph. All right, so I'm going to start off at 10. Your slope is negative 2 over 3, negative 2 over 3, negative 2 over 3. Plot your points. Now draw your line. Oh, let me do it in red. Just so we can kind of see it a little bit better. And there you have your graph. Got an equal sign with it. And then it also says y is greater than. So which way is greater than? So anything above this line. he will score at least 30 points. That's what that means, okay? So, if he scores 
five two-pointers, he needs to score at least seven three-pointers, and he'll be above 30. If he scores nine two-pointers and four three-pointers, he'll be above a 30. So that's what this scale is telling you. If he doesn't throw any two-pointers, but he throws three, ten three-pointers, he's got 30. So there's your scale. That's the explanation of that one. Number eight, if Jordan makes six three-pointers, how many two-pointers can he make? Remember, he wants to score at least 30. So, to x plus, how many did he make? Six, and he wants to score at least 30. Solve for x. To x plus 18, greater than or equal to 30. Subtract 18, so you have 12. So x is equal to 6. So how many does he need? He needs to score at least two, six, two pointers, okay, and six three pointers to make at least a 30. So the answer is six. There's number eight. Good luck, study hard. I will do the next page on a different video. Thank you.